this is going to be really hard to make up. All right. So. Oh, look. We're already videotaping. Somebody hit the button by mistake. All right. Y'all ready to go? Yes. Very good. I'm glad you're here. So this morning, um, we're going to try and cover a whole lot of topics uh, in a pretty fast way. And this morning, um, Gabriel is in with the girls' class um, because it's all we're all covering like introductory materials. And it's kind of like a frame that helps us understand the things that we're going to be doing over the coming weeks and months. So, remember um, when we were together, I told you there are two parts of confirmation instruction, two big things that we're going to be talking about. Do you remember what they are? Uh, is it the Bible? The first one, right? So the first one is the Bible or the scriptures, right? So I write fast and you get to like, when you see me write, you get to like, oh, I wonder what that is. <laughs> scriptures, okay, remember what the other one is? What's the other one, the other part? So there's the scriptures, and what was the other big thing that we talked about last week? Books? It's in books. Of the Bible? Nope, that's part of this. So the scriptures, and then the doctrine, or the teaching. Remember that part, remember that word? Okay, so the word doctrine means teaching. It's just got a different root than the word teaching, okay? So those are the two big things that we're gonna be studying. And the first part, so this first kind of year, we're really gonna be talking about this one. And then eventually we're gonna to switch to mostly this one. But they're both connected, okay? So um, if you'll keep that in mind. So what we're gonna to do today is we're mostly going to talk about scriptures, all right? And then we have these Bibles. And I don't know that we're going to open the Bibles this hour. We'll just see how far we get, okay? But what we are going to do is during worship today, we're going to present you with the Bibles, and we're going to take a picture with the Bibles, all right? And then this is the, this is the Bible that we'll be using in our study time. So you'll have to, you'll be reading some of this at home, and you'll also have to bring this with you on Sunday mornings. Just like when you go to school and you have to carry a backpack or some kind of bag. Yep. Is it okay if I can bring like a bag or something to put it in? Absolutely. I would love for you to do that. Okay. And um, because this Bible is very expensive. This Bible, uh, if we just bought one of these Bibles, it would cost $55. And this is the cheapest one of this kind of Bible. So it's very expensive, and I want you to take very good care of it. So you have to protect it from getting dirty or broken. We don't write in it. Now, you may want to write notes. It's okay to write notes. In fact, this is a copy of my Bible. So I've had this Bible for 30 years. Wow. And at various places, um, I've written notes in pencil. So like here's where I've written some notes in pencil. But what you want to do is be very careful because you like you never want to use up these pages. See this Bible? It's super thin. See the pages? How did they get it that thin? Yeah, that's really expensive paper because it's so thin. But you can't use a marker in it, so you can't use like a regular highlighter. So if you're familiar with highlighting, yeah. So if you're good, is if you get sticky notes. You can do sticky notes, and also at Lifeway bookstore or online. You can order special Bible marking pens or pencils. They're made, they're made for marking thin pages, and um, they won't bleed through. But if you use a highlighter on this, it it's going to bleed all the way through this page and probably two, two or three pages. So you don't want to ever use a really uh, like you don't want to use a sharpie or a marker marker or a highlighter or anything. Uh, okay, one more question. What if we accidentally forget it at home? I would imagine that your teachers will completely chastise you and they may make you stand in the corner with your nose in a little circle. <laughs> See, I think the peak, this, so this is, this one is the study Bible that I grew up with from 30 years ago. And I think the pages of this new one are even thinner. I think they're a little bitty thinner than, than that one. Oh, God. Isn't that amazing? Oh, geez. Wow. So, you have to be really careful with it. Um, so, like, like if you put it in, so, look, so watch this. 
if you put it in a backpack or a, a shoulder bag or something like that, you want to put the binding down, oh, okay. right? Because if you put it like this, then all the weight is going to pull down. Okay, so you want to put the binding down and then also just be careful and protect it, you know. So this Bible is meant to last just like this one. This is the one I go to. This is the one I use all the time. I've had it for 30 years, okay? And so these Bibles are meant to last you for 30 years. So how old will you be in 30 years? 40. 40. Oh, 30 years. 45. Okay. All right. So that's why you got to take really good care of it. It's a very expensive and very good Bible. Okay? Could you take the Bible and, like, do this in a backpack? Because, like, my backpack's so small. You could probably do that. Okay. You can also buy, if you go to Lifeway, if you take this Bible into Lifeway, you go to Lifeway, mm -hmm. or Wait, maybe um, it's out by the mall. <gasps> your mom or your grandma would know where it is. It's out by the mall by Kohl's. Um, uh, behind Chick-fil-A. You know where Chick-fil-A is? So it's directly behind Chick-fil-A. Um, so you can take this Bible and you can go to Lifeway or probably Hobby Lobby. Yeah, you probably can get something to buy. Or, to, or you can to probably... Buy it or to keep it well, I was thinking, okay. so they make Bible book covers. Oh, covers, actual covers too. Right? That would be smart. Where it goes inside of the cover and it zips around it. Right. And those are really good. So my wife, Jennifer, that's the way she keeps her Bible is in a Bible cover and it zips up completely and then she can put notes in there or special papers and stuff like if she you know really likes something from a bulletin or or you know something that's devotional she'll put it in that thing and then when she puts it in her bag or when she travels back and forth or when she has it in her car you know and it might slide it's around safe. it's still safe so I'd encourage you to uh, look for a Bible cover. How much do they cost? I have no idea. They uh, last. Like they're probably like twenty something dollars. They're probably, they're probably well, you could probably afford it. So I bet. I bet. Sure it's I bet your. I bet or, your grandparents would. Right. Or somebody spring might. For it yeah. Because it's a special occasion. <laughs> yeah. I'll ask okay. Mimi. So I'm, these are. There's going to list this little kind of to-do list. Okay. I'm going to give you a paper to write it down. But for right. right now, I'm going to put it up here. So to do, is, Bible cover. Ooh, we should get the pens. Okay. So if you want to look for the marking pens, so they're, they're Bible marking pens. I don't know if they're pens or pencils, so I'm going to put both words up here. Okay, but if you ask at Lifeway, they'll know what, what we're talking about. Okay. Because okay? they've got like half of their stores, Bibles and stuff. All right. Cool. So um, to do Bible cover, Bible marking. Okay, and... A three ring binder. Oh. Because we're going to be passing out papers and you have to keep the papers. It's not like it's not like when you're in little Sunday school and kind of on the way out of the church, you just throw the paper away. That doesn't work here. You got to keep them because we're going to go back to them and reference them and they're going to be a couple of different sets of papers. So you need whatever kind of binder you want, but you've got to get a three ring binder to put papers in. Yep. So do the rings have to be like really big or could they be like no, really no, no, small? No. no, they could be like one inch ring rings. Uh, They're like that. Yeah, that'll be fine. Good question. Can I put a uh, page protectors in there that way my papers don't rip if there's not holes? Uh you can, but I don't I don't think it's necessary. Why don't you why don't we try it for a little while and then you see if you have to go to that length. Alright. Okay? Okay. Okay. Ooh, one more question. Yep. Could we use dividers? Yep. Oh, I have okay. dividers. Man, I love those. Okay. However you want to organize it for yourself, that's what I want you to do. You can make it up nice. You can draw pictures. But I want you to have a... a so you'll need to bring these two things every time. You need to bring your Bible and your three-ring binder that has your papers in it. Question. Okay? Yep. Oh, well, never mind. Probably All right. Not. So let's go for a little while, and then we'll make a break for questions. Okay. Okay? All right. Will you close that and pass them back? Great. How heavy are they? They're pretty heavy to me. See like, see like that right there? That page right there already got crunched. Okay. See that? That's because those pages are so thin yeah. that they crimp, what would you call that? Crunch, crunch. fold, really easy. Crimp. crimp. So. You probably have to put some weight oh, on it that way it stays still again. That's and what they, I do with books. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So.
so that's an example. That's that's what happens with really thin pages. But to get how many pages do you think are in there? Uh, Five hundred seventy. No, oh, probably like maybe thousand, two thousand, maybe three thousand. Okay, you got a guess? Okay, guess. Three thousand. Okay. Uh, Twenty-seven fifty. <laughs> we'll see. It's like the price is right. That's right. <laughs> Actually, maybe. Will, let's see who the answer, who's got it right. I maybe go with that too. What do you think? I'll either go with 2750 or 3000. <laughs> She's overbid. Okay. okay right. 2,377 oh. numbered pages. Oh. I'm the closest. 2,377 oh. numbered pages. 377 <laughs> numbered pages. Oh, number two. No, yeah. oh, there are a few more. There are pictures as well in there? There are okay. pictures? This, that's, what we're, that's what we're down to. Oh, no, is this no, no, I'm just curious what, what you're talking about. Is what what, what number? Oh, oh, is there maps? Do you have this? Yes. You have cool. that book? So oh. technically it's close to 3,000. bigger. Who gets 2,000? Hers is bigger. I have, no, I have the one that I can read. Oh, <laughs> that's what you're saying. So, Letters. are we expected yes. to read every page we have? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. I've never read every page of mine from 30 years ago. But the thing about this Bible is it has so much information, it has all kinds of references. So if there's a place that you want to go to learn about something, then you can look in this Bible and it'll tell you, and you don't have to go to another book. So today during the Gospel reading that we're going to hear today, it talks about Jesus being in Nazareth, his hometown. So if you wanted to learn about Nazareth, you could go to that passage and it would tell you about it. And somewhere down the road, not this week, but maybe a little bit next week or the other one, we'll do like 10 minutes in the Bible and I'll teach you some of the things about how it works. But I don't think we're going to do that today. Okay? All right. Oh, wait, I have one more question. All right. And then we got to keep moving because we can't do questions the whole time. Is there an index? Yes. Okay. Yep. So, here's pens. Whoa. Okay, pens. Um... You can, uh, if you like a certain kind of pen, put it in your Sunday bag and bring it with you. I'm right? That's your responsibility. Okay. So, um, take take two of these and then pass the file around. Okay. Hey, do we get two of them just in case we lose one? Nope. I'll tell you in a minute. Once everybody's got them, slow down there. They are. Well, they even named them like just as Texas Leviticus 19 and Deuteronomy are the law. Yep. I'm going to tell you about that. You can take one so that you know what we're looking at. Oh, okay. All right. So, this little chart is going to be super helpful to us. Remember, I told you last week that you're responsible, you, you, we're going to help you, and one of the things that we're going to learn in this class is memorizing all the books of the Bible in order with their correct spellings. All right? Now, that's a really big challenge, but we're not doing it all this week. So we're going to break it down into smaller parts, and I'm going to do some things to teach you how, and then Miss Pat or Miss Ellen or Miss June, whoever's teaching, will also be helping you figure out how to memorize. The thing about uh, memorization is, memorization is like a tool. So if I want to, yesterday I put up this board here, and I used tools to help me put it up, right? Mm -hmm. And the tools that I used, I used a hand screwdriver, and I used a drill, and a level, and a tape measure. Those tools helped me do the job that I needed to do faster, okay? And memorization, memorizing the books of the Bible, is a tool to help us do what we want to do with the scriptures and doctrine or teaching faster. Okay, so that's why we memorize, and it helps us learn. Just like when uh, when you do memorization of multiplication tables in schools, so you do three times three is three times three is very good, and it helps you do the stuff faster. When you uh, memorize the periodic table and you learn different things, right? It's spatial, right? Because some things are over here and some over here and some are here. Some radioactive things are down here, right? But they're all organized. Pardon? They are. They're organized. 
and I'm going to show you the organization of the scriptures so that, because you, what we do is with, with uh, one of the earliest things that we learn, right, when we're way younger than they are, one of the very earliest things that we learn is patterns. Patterns, right? So you see the pattern on the floor? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, you see the pattern? You see the pattern on the ceiling? Right? Wow. We learn patterns. And patterns help us learn. Like three by th three times three yeah. is a pattern, right? Three, 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 it's a pattern. So I'm going to show you some of the patterns which will help us learn and it helps us recognize things, all right? And that's, that's how we break it down. Now, so what we're going to do to start uh, with this is add some colored pencils. They're not all sharp, but pick one colored pencil. What we're going to do is we're going to start coloring, all right? So here's, look at mine. I have already professionally colored mine. Okay, now uh, the reason I gave you two sheets is because one of those sheets is for you and one is for your parents. So you're not actually marking on both of them, you're just marking on one. So if you double them up like Tessa's got them, that's all right. Because one is for you and one is for your parents. And we're only coloring one. If your parents want to color theirs, that's all right, they can color theirs. Yes? Why are there like two Samuels? I will get there. We'll get there. Okay, so these first five, so look at this, look here. In the Bible, remember the Bible is divided up into two halves, okay? One half is called the Old Testament. It's written in Hebrew, I'm going to show you that in a little bit. The other part is called the New Testament, and it's written in a language called Greek, mostly, uh, and some other small languages, right? So this is Hebrew, Old Testament, this is Greek. So all we're working on right now is the Old Testament, okay? So when you, so I have that for you as a flat sheet. You don't have to fold it, but I wanted to show you that that this is, look, it doesn't go this way all the way across. It goes here, and then here, and then here, and then here, okay? So we're just working on this part right here. And the first five books, I'd like you to pick one color and color those. And go ahead and do that now. And then you can see the second, the next 12 books, I've got another color. You can look at my example and then pick another different color. Just We're just colored and in fast, all right? We're not painting the ceiling in the Sistine Chapel. Wait, what? Sistine Chapel. Sistine Chapel. Have you ever seen pictures? No. It's a, it's a chapel and uh, I think it's... Is it, is it in Rome? No, it was like their, their ceilings are so painted. One guy, like his Yeah, it was, um, it. he painted the whole thing. It's, it's, it's a picture of God and Adam, I think. I think it's created man, I think. All right, y'all done? I'm down to the first one. Okay, let's go. Oh, Lick the split. Just... Come on, faster. Cool. Color big strokes like uh, Cheyenne's doing there. Here's the guy. Yep, and don't color too dark because we got to be able to see the names, all right? Well, good thing I was coloring white. Yep. Can you see me? I don't know why coloring white. Yeah, it's prettier. Yeah. Looks like stained glass windows. I like doing colors that complement each other. Do you think your teachers ought to color them too? No. No? Okay. They probably okay. got them all memorized already anyway. I okay, don't go any further, Cheyenne. Just do those top two and those top ones. I have a question. Yep. Could we write what the language is in on top of it? If you'd like, you can write like Hebrew right there and Greek right there. I don't know how to spell Hebrew. I'll spell it for you. So, um, the Old Testament is Hebrew. It looks like this. H-E-B-R-E-W. And the New Testament is Greek. G-R-E-E-K. Okay. Make sure you get that R in Greek, otherwise it's geek. <laughs> People think you're working for Best Buy. All right, so I'm going to show you Hebrew. This is a Hebrew Old Testament. It has all the books of the Old Testament, so all of these books right here. And originally, the Hebrew would have been written on scrolls, so rolled up pieces of paper, uh, because that was the way that paper was made in those days. And the Hebrew Bible reads from right to left. We read from left to right. Top to bottom, but Hebrew reads right to left, top to bottom. Other languages may read up, so to speak, but in Hebrew it reads from right to left. So the actual beginning of the book 
is back here. In fact, so here's, you see that there's the English name, Genesis, and we'll just find Genesis chapter 1. Can I try and read it? No. Yeah. Because it's in Hebrew. So you That's start right, right here. here. You start right here, on the, on, uh, right here, on the right, to left, right? That's kind of like Leonardo da Vinci. He wrote it right, right to left. Some people have that skill where they can write like in English or, or that, and they can like write mirror stuff. Oh, I can write mirror. Yeah, they can do that, and that's a fun thing to do. But this whole language is written right to left. Okay, so that's, that's Hebrew. And since we're here today and, and uh, we can compare it, here's Greek. Let's see, this one's a little bit easier. So here is Greek, and let's just look up uh, Luke chapter 4. That's today's gospel reading, starting at verse 16. So here is Greek, and there's verse Whoa. 16. That's cool. I see. There's the right there is the word Nazareth. See, it wow. looks like an, a, a, an N. Mm -hmm. That's the word Nazareth. It looks like Nazareth. Yep. Nazareth. So that's Greek, right? So the New Testament is written in New Testament is written in Greek. Old Testament is written in Hebrews. Very good. All right. That's going to be really important to remember down the road. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Yes, yeah, so you may want to write it down. So Old Testament Hebrew. Old Testament Hebrew, New Testament Greek. It's like saying Hebrew something. It is. Okay. Good. So there is a name for uh, the. Well, let's, let's, let's take one step back. So on this little thing here, you'll see in capital letters on this like bookshelf right here, in all capital letters is the word history. Mm -hmm. So somehow you may want to color that in or underline it or something like that. You see on mine, I colored it red, the same color as these uh, 12 books right there. Here's another word down here because there's another kind of literature here, poetry. And here's the third word, prophecy. Those are the three kinds of literature in the Old Testament. Okay? Three kinds of liturgy, literature in the Old Testament. The first one is history, right? Yes. Another one is poetry. Another one is prophecy. So, can you give me an example of history? Some kind of history literature from kind of our time. Does it have to be in the Bible? No, no, not in the Bible. Like more from our time. What's a, what's a piece of history? Rosa Parks. So if you're reading a history about Rosa Parks, excellent. Now, what's an example of poetry from our time? Yes, Cheyenne? Uh, a Light in the Attic. What's that? Uh, it's, it's one of the... You know? Yes. Cool. <laughs> you ever seen yeah. songs? Songs on the radio? Yeah. Those are all examples of poetry. Oh, uh, yeah. Because okay. the words rhyme. Yep. Um, the third kind of literature in the, in the Old Testament is prophecy. Prophecy is a kind of truth telling. It's not necessarily saying what's going to happen in the future. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it just says consequences. So mom and dad say this to you. They say, um, if you don't eat your supper, you're not going to get dessert. dessert right? That's a kind of truth telling that's also geared towards the future. If today, right now, you don't eat your supper, then you're not going to, in the future, get dessert. Okay, that's a behavior and consequences, yes. I'm curious, you yep. colored two different colors. I did color prophecy two different colors because there are two sections of prophetic books there that eventually we're going to uh, divvy up. So that's why I did it that way online. So do we need to do that too? You can do it either way you pick for the moment. Okay, I'm coloring it in here. Okay. I'm coloring that. Just, just make sure I'm All right. Okay, so I'm going to give you another sheet that's going to go along with the sheet that we're doing right now, okay? So here's another sheet. And... Again, I'm giving you two copies, okay? One copy is for you to fill in, and one copy is blank. The copy that's blank is for your parents. 
And uh, the reason I'm giving you a blank one is so that they can quiz you. All right, so you're keeping all of your papers together? Those are for my parents. Okay, right. I was wondering where they came from. Do we need color in the second ones yet? No. We don't have to. So at the top of the page, at the top of, so one of these pages that I just gave you, put your name on it. All right, use a pen, put your name on it. So you see question, the, the first question on there is list the general types of literature found in the Old Testament. Okay, so I've just given you the three general types of literature in the Old Testament. So what's the first one? History. History, write it in blank number one. Do you have pencils? Uh, I do not have pencils. Put your name on the top right, please Tessa. I did. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. There's a blank, so on, on all the other sheets that come, there should always be a name. But you, you got it. You didn't realize I had put a blank there. That's all good. What's the second kind of literature found in the Old Testament? Poetry. Poetry. Write it down, please. You see where poetry is on the chart? Yes, it's on the bottom left. Very good. All right. Very good. What's the third kind of literature found in the Old Testament? Prophecy. Very good. Write it in, please. Um, is that yeah. clock accurate? Uh, 12 minutes, yeah. That yes. is? Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Very good. So, question number four. What general type of literature comprises the first 17 books of the Old Testament? Um, first 17. 17, oh. Okay. These? Yep, that's 17. Okay. So what kind of literature is that? History. History, very good. So answer number four is history. So here's my, uh, here's my picture of the books of the Bible again. <coughs> Look here. So these five books right here all go together. That's a group of five. And then there are 12 books right here. That's a group of 12. 12. Okay? Numbers, numbers are going to be we're not gonna, just the top ones. So numbers and counting is very important in the scriptures. So there's a lot of things that we're going to do with memorization that are based on numbers. Okay? So when I say that there are 5 plus 12 on question number 4. See question number 4? I said 5 plus 12. Yeah. That's a mental clue, and that's going to help you remember what we're talking about, five plus 12. Five plus 12 is? History. 17, history. right? History. It's gonna come up again. Just, just, yep. And these are history, okay? So, these first five books right here, they have a special name. And in English, the name is the law. So you see that's written underneath there in quotation marks, okay? So question number five on the paper is, list the English special designation or name for the first five books of the Old Testament. So the what do you call the first five books of the Old Testament? The law. The law. The law. You with me, Gabriel? So I want you to be paying attention. In today's Old Testament scripture reading and worship, Ezra, who is a priest, stands up and he's going to read the books of the law to the people at the temple in Jerusalem. He's going to read all of the first five books. And when the people, when he gets ready to start reading from Genesis chapter 1 to the end of Deuteronomy, all the people stand in reverence, reverence to hearing the word of God. And they stand for all of the reading of the first five books of the Bible. Wow. It takes them a whole day to read it. And they stand there the whole time, listening to him read. Because at the time, nobody had books of their own. Books of, our, of their own did not exist. Only, they only had books in the temple and in the king. Those are the only ones with books. So, these first five books are called? The Law. Very good. Now I'm going to give you another name. Uh, the Hebrew name, verse, uh, this is uh, question number six. So... The, um, the English, what, the, what we call, is the law. the law. Now, here's the thing about the word law, is we're going to use this word in a lot of different ways. 
But when we use it here in this context, it references the first five books of the Bible. Okay? There's a Hebrew word for this, same thing, and it's called Torah. Okay? Torah. I want you to say that and notice that the emphasis is on the second syllable, the Torah. Torah. It's not Torah, it's Torah. Torah. Okay? And write that down as your answer for number six. What's the Hebrew name for the first five books of the Old Testament? The Torah. So do we do it just write Torah or the Torah? You don't write Torah, you write Torah. Torah. So the Torah? No, you can just write Torah. Okay. Okay? Yes. Question number seven is how is this to be translated? Okay? What does it mean? Right? So Torah has this meaning. It has this meaning of instruction. Or teaching. So you can write down both of those words. Torah means teaching or instruction. I'm just going to write teaching. Okay. Remember what the second part is that we're doing over here? The second part of confirmation. Instruction is? Doctrine. Doctrine, doctrine or teaching. teaching. Right? It's the same, same word, just has different roots. So we could put doctrine? I prefer for this that you put instruction or teaching. Okay. okay. All right. What's the Greek name for the first five books? Because when the Greeks used had a name for this, this these first five books are kind of like the most important books of all of the Old Testament. So they have this special name for them. Okay. So there's a Greek name for it, and the Greek name is Pentateuch. Sounds funny. It is. It is because it's a Greek name. P E N T A T E U C H. Pentateuch. Okay. Okay? So, question number nine is how is this name to be translated? What does it mean? And so, what Pentateuch means is so, so this, you know, there's a, there's a very fancy building in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Where the Department of Defense is located, their headquarters. This building in Washington, D.C. has how many sides? Oh, it's five. It's five. The it has five sides. It's called the Pentagon, right? So the word Penta means five. 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 So Penta means five. five. Books. Five books, exactly. That's so easy. That seems so easy. Yep. So, for question number nine, you're going to write in five books. It can also refer to five scrolls. Remember, because in Old Testament time, be five they weren't written in leafed. They call these leafed books. This is this page is a leaf in the book, but they were written in scrolls that were rolled up. So Pentateuch not only means what we would say today, five books, but also five scrolls. All right? Number 10. Who is the general author of the first five books of the Old Testament? Uh, not, is it Moses. Moses. Right? So number 10 is Moses. We know that he had some help uh, down the road because somebody came in and edited the books because the last of the books, Deuteronomy, talks about Moses' death. And we don't believe that like Moses like saw the future, wrote it, and then died. We believe Moses died, and then somebody came in and edited and said, Moses died. Right? So even though the fifth book, Deuteronomy, talks about Moses' death, he is still the author of these five books. And that's why Moses is one of the greatest people in the Old Testament. And Jesus always gets compared to Moses. Not only Moses, he gets compared to others too, but Moses is the first. Maybe second, I might say Adam is first, but yeah. Right, but Moses is very important Moses in the Old Testament and as far as the huge. Hebrew religion. Yes, yes. Wait, our pants need to fill this in too, so they know this? Nope, it's just a blank one for them to have in case if, if they want to, if they want to take this for themselves and give you this one and say, okay, here's the blank thing. They've got the answers. Now you've got a blank one. Oh, that makes sense. 
You're filling it out for yourself, but you may give it to your parents so that they can quiz you so that you're learning. Because when you come in next week, you have to know this. All of it? All of this you have to know next week. Because your teachers are also going to have a blank one. If you're going to come in the room, they're going to put this in front of you. They're going to say, fill this out. You've got five minutes. What? No, not five minutes. What? Yes. So, oh, so we have to write on the next page because I'm used to studying by just remembering it and saying I'm it out loud. I'm giving you two pages. This you think like you need, you can, so, so that's a great question. Because we learn in many ways and uh, each of us learns in a variety of different ways. So, uh, so uh, one way of learning is simply by hearing, right? But it also helps us to learn when we write things down. So that's why I'm making you write it down. And sometimes asking questions. Sometimes asking questions helps us helps the helps the knowledge of the thing that we're learning sit or set in our brains. There are other things that we can do. We can make flashcards. If I said, uh, sing me. Sing me the words to happy birthday. Would you be able to do it? Yes. Of course, because we've taken these words that are repeated. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And so we've repeated that four times when we sing the song happy birthday. And not only do we have repetition, but we've joined it to, ba -da -dum, bum 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 to music, right? which is another way to learn things. So you can make up a song to learn books of the Bible, for example. There's also a kind of learning that happens all the times in the Bible is while Jesus is walking and going <coughs> somewhere, he teaches his disciples. It's called peripatetic. Peripatetic. It means, peri is a word for around, like, and it means, so, uh, you know, what is, so what is this? In a submarine, you have a, what goes, what? To, to look, not a telescope, but a periscope, periscope, right? So para means around, P-E-R-I means around. So if you see a submarine movie and they say up telescope, and then the guy looks around, it's scope is to see, peri, is a word is around. So peri scope means to see around. What, what is and Jesus, when he teaches, he uses peripatetic teaching, which means as he's walking around, he teaches his disciples. And as they walk around, that motion of walking around makes it sit or set in their brains. They learn because they're moving. So right, we said Repetition, happy birthday to you. Mm -hmm. We said music, happy birthday, ba bum bum bum. But also by moving. So remember what we did when we were over there in that class? Okay. We would do movement with songs. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, we do. Like, in a little stable far across the sea was a little baby. Oh, in a little stable far across the sea was a little baby just like you and me. That's wow. peripatetic because there are hand motions with it. How many books of the Bible are in, or are, are, um, what, are what are the first five books of the Bible called? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. No, what are they called? What are they the not, law. What are their names? They're called the law. What history. else are they called? History. They are a type of literature is history. The Old Testament. They are in the Old Testament. What's another name for the first five books of the Bible? Hebrew. No, that's, that's the language Hebrew. they're written in. You've got it written on your paper. The law, or in Hebrew they're called? Torah. 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 Would you put an accent mark? Do this. An accent mark on the second syllable. Like this. Okay. So an accent mark goes over the vowel. And that's going to say, we're going to emphasize the second syllable. 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 Right, look at this. Syllable. 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 Yeah. The accent moved. I moved the accent from each of those syllables. So in Hebrew, it typically accents the last syllable. Not always, but typically. Yeah. Okay? The law, Torah, or the? Pentateuch. How many fingers do you have? Five. five. On one hand, you have five. Do this. 
Genesis, Exodus, Exodus Leviticus, Leviticus, Numbers, Numbers Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. They're the first five books. And I've just given you another way that's tangible. Another way to memorize something is to say Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. It's a spatial, and that one is tactile because it's touch tactile. So if we're memorizing, memorizing the books of the Old Test, uh, uh, the Gospels, I could say, Matthew, watch, look this, sorry, look, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John. What did I just do? Mark, Mark, I assigned the names John. to different walls. There are four walls, Mark, right? Mark, Matthew, Mark, Mark Luke, Luke, John. And it's a way to memorize things, okay? What's this one? Matthew, Genesis, oh, Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus, Leviticus Numbers, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Look on your paper. Okay, so Numbers 11 through 11, 13. So the left hand column there, put on the first one, write in Genesis. You got the correct spellings. So every time we're doing correct spellings, it's always correct spellings, right? So just go down the list in the left hand column. So don't follow the numbers? Yeah, you got yeah, you got don't follow the numbers. Go. Go down go. on the left hand column. <laughs> in the right hand column I'm gonna give you another way to know what's going on. And in the in the weeks to come I'll give you the cheat sheet. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Nice. <laughs> okay. You ready? No. Almost. Hurry, we're running out of time. We only have ten minutes. Yeah. Hurry. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to give you so some of the times when we're when we're memorizing the books, there they'll end up being like seven of these sheets what we're pulling out today, and that'll take us all the way through the memorization of the Bible and just getting our first kind of ground thing. Um, some of the times with some of the books of the Bible, I'm going to tell you the meaning because like like the book of uh, Leviticus, right? Do you know what that means? No, because it's just a strange name, right? But I'm going to give you the meaning of the name uh, or some, some tidbit to hang on to help you memorize and know what the book's about. Okay? So, in the right-hand column next to Genesis, I'd like you to write the word beginnings. Beginnings, okay? How do you spell it? Just like this. B-E-G-I-N-N-I-N-G-S. Big. Beginnings. Okay? That's because the book of the Genesis is the beginning of God's story. Right? And uh, that's the beginning. In fact, that's the first word is beginning. In the beginning. So if we open up our English Bible and read the first Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Right? And so the name of the book... The name of the book, Genesis, takes its name from the first word of the book. The beginning, right? And the English translation, beginning. Okay, here's number two. What's the second book uh, in the Bible? Exodus. Exodus, okay. So this is how you're going to remember this. Uh, if we were going out the door over there, right, by the Exodus. bell tower, what would be above the door? An exit sign. Exit sign, very good. So the word, uh, so the, the book Exodus, the meaning of the or the root of the book is the word exit. So you want to strike? And I do, and it is the way out. So you want to strike way out too? Yep, right in both. The the key of Exodus is simply remembering the word exit, which if we're in this building, it marks the way out. Okay, in the book of Exodus. It's about when God's people exited Egypt. 
they found the way out of Egypt. Okay? What's the third book in the Torah? Genesis, Leviticus. Exodus, Leviticus. All right, so this is what I want you to, to um, write about Leviticus is Leviticus, we're going to use some uh, uh, yes, uh, alliteration. Alliteration is another memory device you often have in poetry. So like when you said the words rhyme, right? So Leviticus is the law for the Levites. Leviticus is the law for the Levites. So, remember when, remember when I told you that when we said the word, when we have the law, right? Like Torah or Pentateuch, that we use the word here differently than here. Because here the word mean the law, the word law here means rules. And the Levites are a special subgroup of God's people, and they are the priests. So the priests that would serve in the temple or in the tabernacle, which is before the temple, come out of the tribe of Levi. You'll learn that eventually. There's a tribe that comes from, all these guys come from the guy named Levi. Anybody have a friend named Levi? I saw guarantee. Uh, yeah, you've heard of it. So Levi is a name. The people who are his descendants are the Levites. And the Levites are the ones from whom the priests who will serve in the temple come from. So the book of Leviticus is the law for the Levites. Levites. And law is here is understood as rules, rules, rather than when we talked about it here. Here it's more about, let's see if you catch this one. What is this one more about? What's the subcategory? What's the, what's the category of literature? Yeah. History. history. You got it. Here, law is more about history, but here, law is more about rules yeah two different uses of the same word there are probably about five or six different uses of this word law you know here, i'm gonna give you another one i'll give you an example right watch this i'm gonna demonstrate the law you ready everybody's watching i'm only gonna do this once okay i'm only doing this once what was it you dropped a marker and law. what did it demonstrate? What gravity. law did it demonstrate? There you go. Gravity. Gravity. Exactly. The you got it. Gravity. The law of gravity, <laughs> which is like a rule, but it's actually really also a principle. It's a principle that happens right. again and again. I know. All right. Okay. What's the first book in the, Genesis, in the uh, Pentateuch? Genesis. Genesis. Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Very good. Numbers. Yeah. That's where we're at. Numbers. Where's my blue one? Here's the key word for numbers. You guys know numbers? What are your numbers? Yeah. One, two, two three, three, four. Do you know five, how many people six, live six, in Hattiesburg? No. Over a thousand. Uh, yes. Over a thousand. Over good. Do you know how many people live in Mississippi? Probably over a million. Two and a half, three million. How many people live in the United States? Probably billions. 330 million ish? No. Yeah. A lot. How about one billion? In the United States, yeah. Three, about 330, 350 well, million. Well, every day someone's been born, so that's not right. right. Here's, Here's the point. Though, Here's right? the point, right? Right. <laughs> what do you think the book of Numbers is about? Numbers. The number of people, right? Yeah. Because yeah. the book of Numbers begins with uh, what, do you, what do we call it when we count people? Mm -hmm. We take a tally. It's like a tally, it's another word. Oh, it, um, just remember they were this. doing when, the, when uh, Jesus and when he wasn't born yet. But remember when Jesus was born, and Quirinius was governor of Syria. And they were. That's they were. They took a, and this is why Jesus. This is why Joseph and Mary had to go from Nazareth down to Bethlehem because they were taking a. Remember. A census. Census. Census, yeah. census yeah. is a count of the people. How many people are there? Let's take a census. So if you know somebody that works in the hospital, a lot of times they'll talk about, well, what was our census tonight? Which is how many people are in the hospital, okay. right? Um, and in the United States, we take a census every 10 years. So there's been a lot of talk in the news about the census that is coming up in the year 2020. Every year that ends with a zero, they take a census. 
And the book of Numbers starts with a census. How many people are there in the children of Israel? Okay, so that one's pretty easy. Numbers, census. You got it written in? Okay. Write it in. We only got five more minutes. Four. Four. You do everything. I really, can't really go best. long, and I can't go long here like I can in church. Right. Because. <laughs> All right. Let's All right. So here's the last one. Deuteronomy. Yeah. Deuteronomy. So what does Deuteronomy mean? Because that's just a strange like word. Sounds like D. Word. It's a Dude, great word. Do you, anybody it's here know? Uh, Deuteronomy. 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 So there's the word Deuteronomy. Anybody here uh, ever take French in school? Do you all have to do French? No. Not yet. Spanish only. It's only okay. in high school for me. Oh, okay, good. We, it works with Spanish, right? Because this is a Latin, this is a Latin-based word. So, if we we're going to count in Spanish, let's count in Spanish. Uno, Uno dos. dos. Very good. Thank you. That's Ten. what we need to do. Dos. If you're doing it in uh, French, it's something like that. En deux trois. Right? I don't know if that's the right spelling. No, no, yeah. right. It's no, not. What is it? It's an X, right? I'm probably saying something dirty. But no, I mean, it's <laughs> close. Yeah. I think. I don't know what it is. I never talk French. <clears throat> so, uh, this part right here, this part here means two. Two. It can also mean, it can, so if I count, I go one, two, three. But if I count, uh, is it cardinal numbers? It's first, second, third. Uh, okay, so this actually means second. second, and this word right here is this word right here, nomos, is nomos. the word for law. law. Okay, so, so law. this is the second law, and that's how we remember it. But here we go again. So when they use this word law here, it's not, so it's not the law, or history. and it's not, what was the other one that we used? Um, it was law, it was... It was... Uh, law for the Levites. Oh, and it wasn't principles, principles or rules. It wasn't rules. Or principles. And it's not like laws of gravity, principles. This time, it's a very specific law, and it's referring to the Ten Commandments. I'm just going to put slash Ten Commandments. Yep. But you need to know second law... But this time, when they're talking about the law, it's none of the ones that we've talked about so far. It's this very specific set of rules that we know as the Ten Commandments. And it's called this whole book, which has tons of stuff that happens in it, but it's the second time that there's a listing of the Ten Commandments in the Pentateuch, Torah, the Law, the Five Books of Moses. The first time is in the book of Exodus, and here's the second time. And since it's recorded, the exact same thing is recorded this second time. The whole book, which is like 10 verses out of 50 chapters, but the whole book takes its name from that, that little bitty thing. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. All right? Any questions so far? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, if we are to get a Bible page for the Bible, yes. what are the dimensions of it? You're going to know today after worship. Okay. This is going with you. Why I'm you giving you them, and this is what I want you to do. Oh, so, on the top left, put the day's date. What's the date though? It is one twenty-seven nineteen. So where it says today, and it's got that little blank, put 127. Okay? Where it's due, and it's got that little book, put 2-3, or February 3rd. That's next Sunday. And that's the best day ever. <laughs> Somebody's birthday might be next Sunday. Okay? What are we February 2nd, or 2-3. So this is, this is today when the assignment's given. This is when the assignment is due, and here's some lines for you to write down your to do. Okay? So remember what I told you up here? Yes. What do you what do what do you have to bring every week? We have Bible. Bring your Bible. Okay, write that in. Bring your Bible. Write quickly. Okay, number two, what else do you have to bring? Um a Bible case. Well, you can put down Bible case. You want to do a put down a Bible case? Put that on another line. 
Three ring binders, so that's the third thing. Pens. If you want Bible, if you want to bring your own pen or your own pencil, or if you want Bible marking pens or pencils, you can get those. You know, that's not that's not like a rush. You don't have to do it this week. That's purely your preference. Some people like to write all over their books. Some people don't like to write anything in any book. Some people like to say, oh, it's okay to write in your Bible. That helps learn it. And some people say, oh, it's the Bible. We should never write in it. It's your choice, whichever you want to do, okay? But I've given you the information that you need to make a good choice. So no highlighters, no Sharpies, for example. Okay. Or even regular pens. Yeah, even regular pens are kind of iffy because sometimes yeah. they have like little blobs of ink or and they, they stick together. I have a question. Yep. So, could we use like a Sharpie on sticky notes and let that dry and then stick it into the Bible? I would be very cautious about sticky notes because the pages are so paper thin. Yeah, I know. Okay. So, here's the last thing that you have to do for next week. Okay. You got to know the stuff on this sheet. So when you walk into the room at 9.15, if your teacher lays down the sheet in front of you and says, let's start, you fill that out. Learn You're ready to go. One. Yep. Okay. I'm going to give you one more thing, and then we're going to stop. Okay? These are your papers? Yeah. Okay. What? Um, so like, is this for each week? Could be. Each week? Yep, could be. I'm going to put this in my room. Okay. Look at this. Look at this. <clears throat> right here. Eyes here. So this paper right here is about how to memorize stuff and not forget stuff. This will be really helpful to you because it tells about all different kinds of ways that you can learn things and not forget them. This is great for us for confirmation class, but I want you to have this for all of school. Okay, so you can use this in all of your classes, math class, science, history, you can learn how to learn, all right? So, I, I see that you're coloring, uh, Cheyenne, but I don't want you to get too far ahead, okay? I'm not going to do this one, just finish okay. this one, because see right. everybody else can. Okay, all right, y'all ready? Any questions, Gabe? Any questions, Cheyenne? No. So, everything that we didn't write on is for our parents, except for the yellow sheet? Could be. Okay. And you can share this with your parents, or I've got more. If you want another one of those, we'll print off some more. Oh, right? one more question. Last question. Could we, like, put all this stuff in the binder? Yes, it's all got, it's all, this is not three-hole punched, so you may have to fold it or put it up on the wall somewhere. You don't have to bring this every week. I plan to put it together. But you can put this on the wall, or if you have a desk, or you can use it for your other classes, too, and mm -hmm. learn how to learn. But everything else that you get is going to be three-hole punched, so that it's ready to go in your binder. Okay, so all of the other papers, they need to go in the binder. You keep it organized. Question. Right? Can I have that paper clip? Yes, okay. you may. Yay. Okay, we're ready to pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the opportunity to learn more about your word. We believe that all of the scriptures testify about your son, Jesus. They are to us a cradle that holds uh, our Lord Jesus. We would read them and learn them and teach them and share them that we might do the same for your son, Jesus. These things we pray in his precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So remember, in worship today, after the offering, 